the normal one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Great question. Number one, wear a shirt. Uh, you know, definitely just take the time to wear a shirt. That's not a like. That's like not a thing. Like wearing a shirt is not a helpful tip. Like unless you're at the beach or at the pool. Since the pandemic, if you'll let me finish, right. I didn't realize that you have to wear a shirt everywhere. I'm sorry. I thought. Oh. That I'm sure that I'm not the only one that walks around in their underwear and goes to meetings and parties like that. This makes my dad laugh. I need to get my yum yum in my tum tums. Something I've never heard in my life. I don't know who my son's father is. Based on this thing, he's a 22 year old man who carries around love in his pocket, eating ice cream. I need to get my yum yums in my tum tums. About everyone's big dick. I'm gonna Bill Hader's, Hader's big dick. Tired, but everyone's <laughs> big dick. Can we all just shut the fuck up about it? Like, okay, sorry, right? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm the only person left. This is how, this is this is what happened. I tuned in. You motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. This is what I get. This is how I'm treated. I'm a guest. I showed up last minute as a guest because they said, we need somebody. I said, guys, I got you. I arrived. I came in. Boom. I, I set up the lights real quick. Guys, 30 minutes ago, I was in therapy. And now I'm here hosting a Twitch stream? What is Twitch? What, is, what, 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 what are we doing? What, now I'm doing a monologue on Shears Twitch? What, 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 what's happening? Cute. Hey. What the fuck is going on, man? Guys, guys, me, uh, my kids just took over my computer and shut me out. Jerry, Jerry, can you show us some dog handling uh, techniques and tips? So this is it. So we run with the dogs. Come on, come on. We're running, we're running. And then we run and we stop. And we sit, sit boys, sit. Sit boys, show them. Show them. Show them, sit. Guys, <laughs> sit. Jerry, are those, are those your dogs? Uh, not a pretty show. No, no, Super no, cheap are. rentals. And because of COVID, you don't have to have the handler. They just gave them to me. <laughs> Hey, what we just to, it's a pleasure to be here, Paul. Thank what, you for having uh, me. Well, it's first a, of all, let's let, let's let's here. first talk about uh your your stance I didn't, on I didn't shut down the government. I did not shut down the government. It's a pleasure to be here, Paul. I well, okay. Again, we are it's fun to talk about this. Um, you said some things, uh, you know, and you you are running for speaker, right? Oh. You you want to run for speaker or okay, okay. Oh. Uh, wow. Oh, I'm just nervous. Wow. What time do we go live? Uh, we go live. I mean, I, 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 Molly, yeah. what time do we go live, Molly? I have to cold plunge. I got a cold plunge in here before we get going. I thought you said cold play. You know, cold play was just at the Rose Bowl. Buddy. You know how I, you know, how I know? How, because so all I could hear was. Oh, man. You son of a bitch. Chris <laughs> yeah. Martin is good. You know what? I was, I was like going to tell you. I should have done this months ago. I shouldn't do it right now. I'm going to go see Run the Jewels tonight. You fucking dick. Are you serious? Yeah, they're every I night. To get they're tickets doing... And I thought, well, I don't know if my wife would go. That's Why the same you... thing. I bought they're one ticket, whole, Rob. They're doing a whole album. You did not buy one ticket. I bought one ticket. I'm going by myself tonight. But if, <laughs> you know, Bart Coleman, our good friend Bart Coleman, yeah. he runs uh, a website called Veeps, veeps.com. And they will be live streaming the concert. But uh, I know I'm like, I'm so bummed. I'm like, I'm going to go with no one. Uh, and so I'm bummed. Because right when tickets went on sale, like whatever, six months ago, I was like, 
I should get it. It's October. Yeah. I'll just make, you know, I'll make it work. And I didn't. And, the, and then I saw uh, LP tweeting or uh, Instagramming yeah. about it. Fuck. All right. Well, have a great time. Every we night is a different see, album. I know. We would see Jay-Z together. You remember that? I know. I know. And this is like the thing. It was like, no, it was so we, far are, hard. we are a hip hop. We go, I mean, that's what, that's our bread I mean, and butter. When I think of hip hop, I think of these two faces. Dude, we put yeah. Ghostface and Human Giant back the, in the day. <laughs> that's true. The 50th anniversary <laughs> of hip hop should have some of, you know. Shepard Fairy, where is our mural? Oh. Uh, uh, by the way, did you see that Shepard Fairy did a mural of the Beastie Boys in New York? And it's really awesome. It's for I the uh, yeah. I did see that. I also just saw you know Donick, you know Donick Carey. He's yeah, having a party yeah. this weekend, and he and Shepard Fairy is going to be there. And I was like, we're just name dropping all over the place here today. Um, well, some people we know, some people we don't. Like I don't know, I don't know LP. I was trying to get Run the Jewels to do How Did This Get Made because I heard that they liked it, and it was I, I, I don't know them, but I feel like I know them. Yeah, they, uh, I mean, like Killer Mike, I love. Killer Mike has yeah. that Netflix series that was great. Uh, I love his solo album and uh, LP, or wait, is it LP? No, it's not LP. It's e oh man, now I'm going to mess it up. It's what am I real, It's the real LP. The, that, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So I feel like he's the fan of How Did This Get Made? That's what I had heard. And uh, we tried to get that worked out one time, but we couldn't do it. We had a couple, we had a couple of close bookings. And then I realized what was going on. I think I realized what was going on. So a while ago, we got a, a message. We we're like, hey, the Beastie Boys want to do How Did This Get Made? Oh. And I was like, what? And he they were like, near, he yeah. lives near me in Pasadena. Like I, I almost ran over him a couple of days ago in my car and he walked right in front of me and he was with his son. I was like, eh. like I wanted to like fan out on him. But it like, uh, you know, so like, like, so I, you know, and then. What happens is I feel like then publicists get involved and then it gets a little bit uh, convoluted and then yeah, it all yeah. falls apart. But uh, but yeah, it's it's always tricky. It's tricky to kind of put like anybody who has a lot of handlers and not like LP yeah. doesn't have a lot of handlers, but it's like it's just like all of a sudden becomes a thing. When are you in it town? Is, what are you doing? How are you a, doing it? That would be a big thing for sure. Um, you know, before we start today's show, though, too, I mean, because we are live. Apparently, we are live. Molly said we are live. We are live. We, are. we were pretending yeah. that we didn't know that we were but live. But we know we are live. We are so live. We have a lot to talk about. But I also Positive. just wanted to, I think we both wanted to take a moment to acknowledge what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on in Israel and Palestine and, and the lives lost and the trauma that people are dealing with. And, you know, it, it sounds always so empty to say, like, our thoughts and prayers are there, but we are thinking about them. And we're thinking about people who are struggling this week. Uh, and we just are, are want yeah. to do the show just to take your mind off it for this, you know, next hour. Yeah. So. I mean, this is like doing a comedy show after nine 11 or something, you know, it's like, it feels yeah. really, yeah. I mean, we were saying before the show, Paul and I, that this just feels terrible and weird. And um, so we wanted to, yeah, just acknowledge what's going on, and and yeah, we're praying for everyone in Israel and yeah. everyone in Palestine, and um, I hope that. Yeah, I mean, it's just so scary right now. It's like so scary. I was trying to like, it's so hard to talk to kids about it too. Like my daughter, like doesn't know anything about it, obviously, but like, even like trying to bring it up because. I mean, just this is a dumb sidebar thing, and then we can start like fucking around. But like, we could talk about the Fraser reboot. We could talk about the Fraser re <laughs> reboot. But um, yeah. But like, my daughter came home. I don't know, like a week or two ago, before any of this happened. Yeah. And she's been like joking around about hate. Like she's been saying hate a lot. Like I hate people. I hate. Right. Like she made up a funny song. And at first, like I, I. I let it go at first because like she's a kid, she doesn't really know about this. But then like I was like, honey, like we don't say hate. Like you don't, I don't joke about that. Mommy doesn't joke about that. Like we just don't, we don't joke about that. And then like it kind of died down. But then like yesterday, she just started doing it, and it just caught me at a weird time because it was like so front of mind. And like I've just been, as we all have been, exposed to all of this stuff that's going on and like trying to process it. And it's really bigger than 
you can process it. But anyway, she started like singing this song about hate. And I was just like, do not like, I don't want you to say it. And she could tell, like, I mean, I didn't want to like scare. Her. Right, right, right. Yeah. Again, she's like a kid. She doesn't even know what she's saying. But like, I was just like, we, I'm, I'm trying to tell you in like the most serious way I can without like, you know, being scary that like, we just don't, we don't say that. We don't talk about that. But anyway, it's just one of those things. that's like such a horrible time for everybody. And, um, it's impossible to talk about with kids and I don't well, know that you should, but, um, it, you know, I think, you know, a lot of the sentiment you see on online, I think a lot of people have been struggling with a lot of, there's been a lot of online energy, right? Yeah. I think on yeah, Instagram, yeah. people yeah. have been really freaked out. And I think at the end of the day, like what everyone is relating to on a, on a, or what is the one thing that we can all unite around is that there are innocent people who are being, uh, who are, uh, I tell you, it's like, I, we can relate to the humanity of it, right? And I think yeah. that that's the thing that that I've been so surprised at the lack. Yes, it's a nuanced topic. Yes, there's yeah, history. Yeah, yeah. Yes, there is politics. All of these things are true. But it feels interesting that this week it's been even driving at the hu the simple humanity of yeah. this week has been a really it's been interesting that that's been so divisive uh, amongst people. And I, I will say that um, Maja Caprock brought up, there's a great thing called Under the Desk News for relating to kids and talking to kids about stuff. I listen to this mm. podcast every morning with my kids called Kid News. Uh, it's like a five minute news podcast. And they do a good job of kind of talking about things a little bit. It's not going to go that deep and it didn't go that deep this week. But I, I do think it's important to like just treat our kids and and – I can only imagine how hard it is for kids that are older who understand how to use the internet more, these images that people are seeing and sharing and that are out on social media. Like yeah. that's the stuff that's really detrimental too. to, to see that. Uh, it's great to get the attention to it, but it's also, you have to protect your kids and yeah. what they get to see too. So, all right. Let's but anyway, try. but anyway, let's we're going to move. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you a question right out of the gate. Rob, is this about the Frasier? Is this about the Frasier? Too uh, late. Reboot? I'm off the Frasier reboot. I don't know. Okay. I mean, okay. but here's what I'm going to say. It was announced this week, Rob, that oh, Jada Pinkett Smith and Will oh. Smith have been living separate lives since 2016 when you this, met this Jada Pinkett Smith. might go down as the worst segue ever from <laughs> one topic <laughs> to another time i figured it was like we had but to i sent yeah. i did i did catch that only because my wife sent it to me my wife loves pop culture as you right do. i i i try to like dip my toe in and kind of hate it at the same time but uh oh i said hate i shouldn't have um the <laughs> i but i sent molly the clip from, I, I don't know if people saw it on the Today Show, and my wife sent it to me. Should we just play that clip? I don't, oh, I haven't even seen the clip. Oh, I just read article. it. Oh, you have to watch no, this No, no, okay, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Molly should have this, I think. I don't know if she has it queued up, but let's take a look. But the thing that surprised me the most, that I actually had to reread it, because right. I said, is this true? Right. Was that in 2016, you and Will decided that you were going to live completely separate lives. Yes. It was not a divorce on paper, right. but it was a divorce. divorce. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been apart. Yeah. That I'm I'm furious. I'm furious because why why did we go through what we went through? Why did we as a pop culture consuming country, why were we forced to endure all of the bullshit with the slap which was for nothing. It's like, well, keep my, keep my friend's name out of your mouth. Keep but my I but I don't get this idea. So the the other thing underneath this is Jada said that they never will get a divorce. Like that that's the promise that they are keeping to each other. But yet they are divorced, but yet they show up together at events 
And Will Smith, I read his book, or I should say, I listened to his book, um, and and speaks to his marriage. So Are you to serious? what end? Yes. And that like book, in, in what in what terms? In in the terms of saying, like, my wife, Jada, and I, we have this house. This is my dream. We live in this place. We do this together. I'm turning 50. I'm freaked out. At least I have Jada to help me. So I'm like, what is going on? Like, there's a now, difference I, I here. I feel I, mad now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take some of the anger at the world and we'll put, put it on these guys. Um, what, what, um, I, I don't want to open up this can of worms, but is she a Scientologist? No, just, but there's talk, him? there's talk, there's talk that, like that is, is part of this, that Scientology is like too big and too powerful. And they're like, no, 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 no. You guys are not divorced. You're, you're together. Here's what I'll say. I think they are Hollywood weird. And I say that with love. <laughs> like I say that with Wait love. It's like, what do you mean with love? Because it's like, I don't think that they're bad people, but I think it's like, okay, we, this is our thing. It's like conscious uncoupling. I like that. I get what that is. I know oh, people I'm, really listen, Bruce Willis, Demi Moore, like all of that be divorced and be happy. I think that's great. A hundred percent. But this is like weird. This yeah. is like weird stuff because remember Will Smith went on red table talk. I love red table talk by the way. And, and when I watch red table talk, I'm like, Ooh, shit's weird here. Like there's some weird shit. Like <laughs> I can't quite put my finger on it. And like he had to come on red table talk to talk about, her fucking this guy, but it seems like she was fucking that guy when they were living completely separate lives. So I'm like, you're coming on to like have a conversation about this. It's, um, yeah, I don't even like giving it this much thought and effort because they just, they lied to us. And I feel, I feel betrayed. I'm sure Chris Rock is like, what, uh, what, why? Well, but then, Why but then you... Jada said Chris Rock had heard that they were separated and tried to take her out on a date. What? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. None of this stuff adds up. This is like the usually the end. Trying to figure out Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith's relationship. Someone, someone called it, you out. It's red towel talk. No, it's red table talk. Right? Red someone towel talk. Who was it? A red Jones? towel no. talk. Hold on. Wait. Red maybe, towel. Maybe they're maybe they're making a joke. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to figure out Will Smith and Jada's relationship is Hamilton like Burger. The- Hamilton Burger says, "Dude, I had a friend who wrote on Fresh Prince. He was an awful person." All right, Hamilton Burger. If you had a friend that wrote on Fresh Prince like that long, Hamilton Burger is sixty years old. Um, uh, well, this all I was gonna say is this: I, I feel like, like. Th- Trying to figure out Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith's relationship is like the end of Usual Suspects, but none of it makes any sense. It's like, yeah, you, like it's like, wait, all these you're giving me so much information, but none yeah. of it connects in a way that makes any sense. I'm like, okay, all right. I mean, they they sh- why if you're living separate lives, are you showing up? Why keep the facade? Why keep the why why open relationship? Fine. Living oh. living separate lives for seven years? I mean, yeah, that's a really long time. I don't know. The whole thing. I mean, you After, and Holly, how long have you guys been separated? We've been separated ever since I found out that our horse trainer is um, taking advantage of a situation where evidently yes. we don't even have a horse. Well, that now did, I, did I you told you that, that was. Did you, I did, did you know? I that? did know that. That's when I thought it was weird. Yeah, you, I thought because you weird. told me I had a horse. Well, I just said that, you know, sometimes I have a horse trainer, Paul, there's a horse trainer named Bronson that comes over all the time to train our horse. And you said, uh, yeah, I think you have a horse. And I was like, well, Paul says I have a horse. I probably bought a horse. Well, you know, you shouldn't listen to me about whether or not you have a horse or not. I mean, that's a sort of like, you know, anyway, we are consciously separated. We have. Okay. That's, that is, that's really exciting. I'm living here in the garage. I live here in the garage and I do you know, a lot of shows on Twitch. Um, you have a, you have like multiple shows. You basically do two hours multiple. a night. Yeah. Me and some of it is just you watching me. sports. You just <laughs> talking about old Clemson games. It's me watching classic, <laughs> classic football games, 
but like for the first time, like, so I don't know who won either. Uh, (laughs) Wait, I got to tell you this. So one of the things that I I love and look, uh, I try to be off X. um, Yeah. You know, know. I I, I try. I'm I'm so conflicted about that too, because I'm off of it, but I still like peek at it, you know? Well, because there's enough fun. It's bad. I know, but but it's just like threads needs to fucking get news and fucking trending topics going how long yes. is this shit going to take to have a fucking text-based app? Like, I could do that in a weekend. I, I all I want to do, I, 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 like, look, I like my Clippers talk. I got to go on X to like hear my to see all my Clippers stuff aggregated. By the way, I did take the wife, uh, who we've been this separated separate, since two thousand and five. This is a separate topic. Yeah. Is this your trip to Seattle? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, we were I, up there. I want to. Uh, we I want to yeah. hear okay. about it. But okay, for, but we got to finish. About- oh yeah, Fraser. So sometimes I peek in on X, and we're talking about sports. And whenever I want to hear the, a great analysis of sports, I turn to former LA Laker Magic Johnson. And I want to show you after the the Dodgers were swept this week, right? The yeah. Dodgers had an amazing season. They got swept in the first round of the uh, the playoffs. And you know, I go to get my sports news from my favorite guy, Magic Johnson. And uh, and I want to show you what he had to share about the Dodgers getting swept. Here he is. Yeah. We're all disappointed that our Dodgers didn't hit or pitch well. That's why we lost the series to the Diamondbacks. I love his then. takes on. <laughs> I love his takes on stuff, man. He 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 owns. I'm a I'm a pro sports idiot. Does he um, own the Rams? Also part of the Rams. Um, Magic what? Johnson, I feel like is. He's got a, like he. I know he owns movie theaters. He owns like he MJ. Owned. Yeah, he's he's a, he's but, but around. He, he, he tweeted something about a football game lately where he was like, "Like we can't tackle, and until we learn how to tackle, it's not going to change." You know, like he's just like saying like exactly what it is. Like no fucking worries about like I'm part owner, and I'm telling you, shit is fucked up, and it's because of this. Like I love it. it to me, what I love about it is. His Magic Johnson's tweets are the same. Magic Johnson's tweets are are the conversation that you make casually with like a barista or like the person checking you out at Target. Like it's yeah. like, oh, Magic Dodgers lost. Yeah, well, I wish they could hit or pitch. It's like it's like it's yeah. it's empty. It, yeah, it's. So, he, he is. I mean, that's his business empire is staggering someone corrected me he owns part of the washington commanders which is okay uh, yeah the football team yeah um okay so um you you were in seattle a secret, i was in seattle a secret trip to seattle did you stay with my in-laws um i tried to i tried to get you know, in-laws to let us in. They did not let us in. And I should have actually asked you both, uh, you and your, uh, your separated well, They wife. said they heard someone rummaging around in the bushes um, mm. a couple nights ago. And yeah, were- well, I was up, I was trying to get, you know, through the window. Yeah, you can't do that. It's really dangerous. Uh, my father-in-law owns a ton of guns. A ton. I know. Well, that's why I went, I went to the room where I, I went with the room with the biggest windows because I figured if I could see him coming at me, I could duck and dodge out of there. He's, get also, in there. he's also kind of famous for, he invented what's called a human mousetrap. It's like a giant oh, size mousetrap, um, f- but for people, for catching people and for like breaking their necks. Now, you know? so, this is, is this true or not? And I don't want to put you on the spot, but your father-in-law was the basis for the original saw, right? That's correct. Yeah. For the original wow. what? Saw. saw. Saw the movie? Yeah. The basis? Well, no, no, not the basis. Like oh, he was basis. the basis. Oh, yes. I was like, oh shit, what band is named Saw? That's a great name. Um, yeah, he yeah, because he he's has human movie, traps. Yeah, the movie, um, the movie Saw was based on him. Yeah, he sets up deadly traps. Human uh, traps. Human traps. Yes. I literally <laughs> thought you said basis. <laughs> um all right i i I had a good time in seattle i I i'll tell you this much where where did you where did you eat that's what i want to know okay so uh we went to this place and i should have asked you for a better restaurant recommendation because i 
scoured internet and I, I found this place that everyone was talking about called uh, Spinasa or Spinasi. Um, it's an Italian restaurant. Okay. And we go to this place. Yeah. Awards on the wall. It took me, like, uh, I had to get the reservation like a month out. I had to oh, wow. wait until the month turned because it was hard to get a reservation. And June and I are excited because it's like an overcast day in Seattle. We're, like, we're going to eat some good Italian food. We're going to go see a basketball game. It's going to be fun. We go there. And, uh, and the restaurant's completely empty. Uh -huh. uh, it's 5 o'clock. We're going early. We're going early bird special. And, yeah. uh, and we say... Uh, you know, they say, oh, here's your table. And they put us like right by the door. And we're like, oh, can we like get a table away, away from the door? And they're like, you know, on this trip, it's just you and June, a romantic Just me trip? and June. Yeah. Okay. We, so we had our anniversary uh, last week. Oh, uh, no. Our, thank you so much. A couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so we decided we were going to do this as like a little addendum to it. Okay. So we get to this restaurant. It's like five o'clock. They, they, uh, they go, we'll show you to our table. We sit down. And uh, it's like right by the door. And we're like, oh, can we just like have another table? And they're like, no. And it was like empty. There was no, no one else. I was like, yeah, okay, uh, sure. And we sat down <laughs> sitting there. And then the guy comes over and he goes, okay, let me tell you a little bit about this place. This is Italian, but not the Italian that you know. This is what? more the Italy near France. So that's why you're not going to see any tomato stuff on the menu. Uh, you're not going to see any of this. And I was like, it, everything that you knew of Italian, it didn't have. And we were both like, oh, no. <laughs> we, it was like, you know, when you're just in the mood for like, yeah, I just want it to be oh, simple, easy, good. I don't yeah. need it to be so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we, we went in and it was, and, you know, it looked good. It was, yeah, it, it we, I joked with June that we we basically I, I food poisoned her uh, on this trip because we both like left there like Ugh. like yeah. we we had this thing it was like a a butter lemon pasta but it was too heavy it was it oh. and they, they did a great job they did a great job but it was also just yeah. oof my gosh now let me ask you a question when you and June mm -hmm. are at a restaurant and yeah. it's not it's not exactly what june wanted does does it get um confrontational does june say at any point does june let the restaurant know that this was not june's cup of tea well i think that we both are adults you know yeah. we try to we try to you know <laughs> look we try to go through it the right way um yeah. i start to sweat a little bit, especially on something like this, when it's like an anniversary, a special night. Now, luckily, I already had planned a nice yeah. anniversary dinner on our actual anniversary. That went off great. Beautiful place. Really nice. Sweet spot. I thought you, this was going to be know the when, better one. Do you know when my anniversary is? Just pop quiz. Do you know when my anniversary is? Um. Oh, my gosh. It's you, one of you those do, days. Of, you, one you of those days. Know. It's like an important day for me, I believe. Oh, you yeah. It's know. my birthday. January yeah. 31st. Yeah. January 31st. Oh, by the way, uh, June, June was great on Frasier. Uh, June is in the reboot of Frasier. I, I didn't, didn't know, know her. I didn't know her episode uh, came out. I thought they only did like one at a time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, June is in an episode of Frasier where uh, Frasier and his son can't decide uh who june is either either a blind date for frazier or for his son now you will be um disappointed in me when i tell you that i did not know and i i currently am not yeah. aware about of this reboot there is a real what? reboot of frazier i don't know anything about oh this. rob yeah frazier just came back this week i don't know anything about this well what it's happened not like a, to the show he was doing where he was like the mayor of like chicago and like um like a i three... think you're thinking of ted danson <laughs> no, and because ted a... danson had a show where he was the mayor and that no, was, just was out. A, there was like a gritty like mafia show oh, on like stars or that was years and... ago like yeah. uh, and also ted danson was on i believe as well <laughs> but um 
Um, but uh yeah like i mean this bull. is a... someone said bull is it was it bull maybe it was no, no bull is a different bull. one it was it, it was like Blood. power or money or yeah i was like, it was uh, like yeah anyway no well, this not... is a, this is what yeah uh the comment section is never helpful damages uh, okay. was it damages was he on damages no uh yeah he uh, he might have been but there was another one after that where he boss. was like boss that's boss. what it's called, boss. boss. Okay. Okay. Well, this is what. Thank uh, you, Vic Payback. Okay. So this is this is the this is the Frasier trailer here. You'll see it. Like I don't think I have the theme song, but uh, Wait, I have. When it. did June shoot this? We're on strike. Oh yeah, way before the strike. Like way before. Okay. Show it. Show the trailer. Oh sorry. Oh sorry. I popped it. I uh, I popped it in, but I didn't see it. Here we go. Hold on. Let me rewind it. Here we go. Oh. What is it about the city of Boston? That hold on, Molly. Wait, wait. wait. Are you playing it or aren't playing it? Wait. Hold on. I'm going to let me add it on mine because I'm uh, here. Pop it. Up. Here, here, here Frazier go. looks great. He does. He does look good. Here we go. Is it about the city of Boston that leads me to forego the more sophisticated temptation of the fermented grape? Sitting here with a cold brew in my hand, I feel amalgamated with the hoi polloi. You are the classic everyman. <laughs> Freddy! Surprise! Dad! You're at my door, unannounced. No, there's a shorter way to say that. Surprise! <laughs> What's going on with your son? I wish I knew. He's got a girlfriend I've never even heard of. When I told him I wanted to spend more time with him, he said no. This is not a good time. Have you considered that he hates you? <laughs> I miss you, and I won't take no for an answer. So I've taken a job, and I found a place to live. My dad, I mean, he can be kind of... He smelled really good. Yeah, he always smells really good. <laughs> Don't sit there! Those are Christian Lacroix pillows. So we can't sit on the couch. Not in jeans. Call in for salads and scrambled eggs. What do you say? We have a toast. I got some scotch. That sounds oh, good. Great, I'll go get it. Top shelf. Oh, of course, nothing less. No, it's on the top shelf of the hutch. Green plastic jug. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what to do with those tossed salads and scrambled eggs. Today I'm spending time with my son, colleagues, and friends. For the first time in my life, I can say that Fraser Crane wants for nothing. Oh, that's too bad. I had somebody that I wanted to set you up with. I can be ready in five minutes. I can call in a hand. There okay. he is. Fraser's back. Well, I can tell you that there is no reason for that show to not be on CBS. Like, it, doesn't that just go straight to CBS? I mean, if there was a. I feel like strike. it needs There's... to go immediately. Yeah, it's like, it's going go to go straight to CBS. Yellowstone. Did you see, Yellowstone, did you see what's going like... on right now? That they that they ran out of like NCIS and they're playing NCIS Sydney on CBS? Yeah, the, dude. Oh, by the way, we have to talk about Naked Attraction. And we talked about Naked Attraction. No. At some point. At some point, we'll talk about Naked Attraction. Um, if you have not watched Naked Attraction, I just... Well, we'll talk about it later, but okay. uh, there's, there's a show on Max called Naked Attraction, which could easily be called Close-Ups of Dicks and Pussies. I've heard about this on Howard Stern. They were talking about this. Like, Okay, I want to talk about it, that. It is um, historic in that we have crossed over a line in television, and now we cannot go back. Like, it is, it is just you pick a date based on their dick. Like, like they show, they, sh you're looking at their dick and you go, I want that dick or I want wow. that vagina. Like it's, it's wild. This is um, why, this is why the writer's strike uh, was important to be over. And the actor's strike <laughs> needs to be over because we are just showing people's dicks on television. I mean, yeah. and I know that it's the basis level of things, but we're going to get tired of that eventually. I think, you know, we watch. In our family, um, you guys are a survivor, a survivor. Family, of course, we right? are. But uh, we came back from our anniversary night. Oh God! And... Paul, how many times did June tell you to mention that it's your anniversary? Fifteen. Um, but we we went to see. Uh, this is like this always happens with June. She's like, oh, you want to watch something fun? I'm like, yeah, let's watch something fun. And I'm thinking we're going to watch like a scary movie. We're going to watch a funny movie. We're going to pop in bottoms. We're going to watch, you know, whatever it is, like just a fun new thing. And yeah. she's like, let's watch couples therapy. Oh God. Now uh, I like, I like couples therapy, but I'm like, it's not, that's not fun. That's a stressful show for me. Wait, I don't know that show. Do I, have I watched it? What oh is it dude, on? it's on Paramount plus. 
Uh, and no, it's, no, 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 it's, no, no, no. I love the show ultimately because it is a therapist who sees real patients, but mm. they, um, they That's follow them stressful. for a season and it's, it's too way too stressful, but you just sit in, it's like you sit in like three or four people's therapy sessions over 10 weeks. Now, um, let me ask you this. Are they showing their genitals? I'm out. No. I'm out. No. I'm out. Sorry. I'm out. Oh, wow. I'm out. Okay. I'm out. Wow. I have to see. I have to see the dicks and the pussies. Otherwise, and the butts. I heard I that they see, are like see. they are like vul the vulva's nice here. Like they they. Uh, oh, sorry. They. I heard that they are. They are like very much not up in it, but they they it, they really are looking at everything. Oh, the show is the. I mean, the people on the the naked people don't talk. They're behind a screen. And the first part of the show is, okay, raise the screen halfway. So they raise it up. And so you see their privates. And then, you know, the contestant goes and they like, they look at the pussies or they look at the dicks and they go, okay, turn around. Let me see the butts and the buttholes. They don't look at the buttholes, but they do look at the butts and they talk about it with the host and they, and then they go, okay, raise the screens a little bit more. So the screens go up like, so you can't see their faces, but you can see if they're their boobs or if they're guys, you know, what their torsos are like. And then, you know, the person like decides, decides, and then they finally raise it so you can see their faces, but the, but the people don't talk at all. And then the person that's like wanting to go on a date, they get naked and they come back and then they're totally naked. And then they have to like, Oh, and oh, sorry, I forgot to mention all along the way they're um, they're getting rid of someone. So they're like, oh, I don't like this guy's dick. Uh, his dick it's is too big for me. That would hurt me. So uh, I don't want that guy. And so they're all right. Say goodbye to Randy. And then Randy comes over and gives the most awkward hug. You know, he's naked. She's not naked. They hug. And then he's like, see you later. And he's like, bye. You know, and then oh, they go on to boy. the next guy. Well, but anyway, you, that reminds me of the, do you remember this show? This is the show that I remember as a kid, and I was like, we can't get any worse than this. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this open. Uh, Good evening and welcome. I'm J.D. Roberto, and this is who? Are You Hot? J.D. The Roberto. search for America's sexiest people. <laughs> this is the show that cuts to the chase. You are not going to hear any bad versions of Aretha Franklin songs. All right. All you right. will not be forced <laughs> to endure any. New I love that they're like slamming American Idol. Like you're not gonna. We're gonna just tell you if you're hot. And I remember like uh, Lorenzo Lamas. Like he would have like a a laser pointer on people. Like yeah. and it like and I was like, oh, we can't stoop any lower than like this guy. And but yet we yeah. have. Well, the only what thing judges have to say about Skyler. Not. What? That's <laughs> bullshit. Twenty-four-year-old substitute the... teacher from Chicago, Illinois, Roderick McClay. Whoa, with a spin and everything. <laughs> What's the verdict? That's all it is. They just come out and then they get thrown into a vat of acid. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I will say, and I've only watched the first episode of uh, Naked Attraction, but yeah. it's a British show. So if you like uncircumcised dongs, definitely watch the show. Uh, but um, they try to, from what I can tell, at least from the first episode, they try to like be body positive. Like there's, right. they kind of, they, they must have like coached the people like, don't say that someone is fat or anything like that. You know, so like they'll say other things like, oh, I I love like a full figured body or I really love a curvy body, you know, like so th it's it's all very positive, um, you know, and, and the people that I did you hear every now and about then the fart? Um, I didn't see one about a fart yet. Okay, I've only I watched the first one. OK, because I heard there was like one woman who likes people who fart in bed. Oh gosh, She's I haven't a gotten farting far. fetish. I don't know okay. that I'm going to watch a lot of it, um, but I did watch it with my wife. Well, first I watched it by myself, and then I told my wife about it, and she was like, "What?" So I had to rewatch it with my wife, and it was just like, you know, I was trying to kind of like 
trick my wife like i was like so which like which of these six dicks would you vote off so right she would, she would tell me and i was like well which of these dicks do you like and she would tell are me, they manicured like, aha aha liar cheater betrayer you know i would catch her um, but it did, are they manicured some of them are manicured some of them are not i mean that this is all you know part of naked attraction paul it's like you know do you but i mean we don't we, that's not how like we aren't attracted to people's like like there's something interesting it's like you're not attracted to somebody's dick i would i imagine also for women like that's I go. definitely I go. not i'm done i'm oh, done with this show whoa I'm done with hey you. i'm done with wait a second show. i'm done with this whole deal um yeah i mean in a in a weird way the the format of the show is they do this thing in the studio and there's no studio audience they're just sort of like on a stage with these people in like boxes i mean it's right. very it's <laughs> the definition of Obje obje objectification right but i get um, like, i get it but, but, it's then they, like but, but then they do go on a date afterwards and they film that and they they're sort of like ha 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 this is so weird seeing you with your clothes on but the first couple at least in the first episode are very cute and they're like oh you know like we're such a good match we already know what we're like physically and then they kind of you know i'm sure that's why they were first out of the gate in the pilot but um yeah but anyway someone said that this show has been on for a long time in the uk so Maybe, yeah, they're more definitely they're more comfortable with their bodies over there than we are here. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Uh, well, you know, it's it, it, like I, it, it's OK to be OK. I mean, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is like. I'd, I'd almost say. Well, what's know. interesting, too, yeah, and then we'll move on, is that um, not everyone on there has like a rocking body like a well, lot of that. People, yeah. They have a little like soundbite at the end from every person as they're like voted off. And they all kind of say like this sort of sweet thing of like, you know, um, I wasn't a match for this person, but this is something that I've always um, felt weird about my boobs or I felt like my dick is too small. And this is like really empowering for me and, you know, whatever. I mean, some of them, there's a couple guys where you could tell like, oh, this is that's a psychopath. Like this guy is going to go murder someone. Uh, in a couple weeks but but a lot of the people seem kind of sweet like oh i'm just doing this as a thing for me to like boost my confidence and feel better about my body and well um, somebody so somebody's saying that they they also have a show this is uh where uh a couple has sex in a box while a panel of experts sit outside and, and see, discuss it yeah now that is what i was confused about because my wife and i uh, we're making love in a box. I think I told you about this. Oh yeah. Yeah. The other day. My wife and I were making love in a box in a glass box. And she said, where, like, where did you get this box? Like, and I said, yeah. Oh, I just like, I, you know, I found it or whatever. And then I was kind of lying because I wanted to impress her because it was our anniversary. And then I looked around and like, there are all these TV cameras and there are all these like, uh, experts and audience members and stuff. And it, the whole thing became a disaster. Well, that is, you know, that is a, whew, it's true. You know, it's tricky. It's tricky when you don't tell your partner, you're gonna put them in a sex box. No, or that they're, that they're being filmed for television and they're on live TV. Like I yeah. should have now looking back clearly, I should have told my wife. Okay. So it says the show is called sex box. It, it, the premise is, Couples will be more open to sexually themed discussions after performing the act itself. They have to retire to a private sex box on stage where they were to have sexual intercourse with one another. Um, but oh, I wonder if it seems like what, a, where is this show? Um, is a... Sex box, sex box, uh, BBC. Wow. By the way, we have guests coming up tonight. Uh, yes, Felicia uh, Day. Fel Felicia Day uh, is going to be returning to the show. Sex Box, a TV series. Uh, Wait, like, I'm, has Felicia been on our show before? Was I here? Sometimes I think that she was at one point. car accident. You know, I was in a terrible car accident. She might have done one of the games that we did. I, I, she's definitely been on before. Okay. She's done. We've done okay. something with her. Uh, this is a uh, all right. So this is a Sex Box. Let's see. <clears throat> oh my this gosh. They'll have sex and then immediately afterwards come out and talk frankly about what they did. To me, a panel of internationally renowned sex what? experts and in front of our studio audience. Welcome to Sex Box. 
<laughs> All right, so it'll be honest. It was just one big massive challenge and never again because I nearly passed out. Yeah. Fanny. I'd like to ask, if I may, what kind of sex you had in it. <laughs> oh, they don't Emphasis. show it. Right. Bleak, uncomfortable. Did you have angle sex? As in a television first, our couples and a panel of experts hold a grown-up conversation about sex. And okay, so that's at least different. Like, so they well, that's different. Yeah, naked attraction is they show it. Like your dick is on TV for like twenty minutes, and people oh are like looking God. at your dick or your vagina or your boobs or your butt. That is different. That can you pick not... what they are look at? Like, can you pick like? No, um, I don't. No, you can't say. It, I like. I want to show my butt over. No, no. Okay, no. they do ask you. At the very, very end of Naked Attraction, they ask you what you like about your body and what you don't like. So you can because I, I, I'm Maybe. thinking I'm in a box. Sure, we'll just watch like, this trailer. Yeah, watch this trailer. Like, I, I think I'm in this box and I'm thinking it's cold. Yeah. And I'm thinking I gotta be like I'm ready. And then I'm nervous. It's like I, it doesn't feel like that's a, a. I need it to be warm. I need it to be like relaxed in there. Like it's you know. Let's see. All right, sex box. Welcome to Naked Attraction, the dating show that likes to let it all hang out. Can picking a partner based solely on natural beauty help you find the one? <laughs> Bring it on. When we're entirely unfiltered, what do men and women really find attractive? We are going to reveal them to you bit by bit. Are you ready for this? This looks jumpy to me. I'm ready now oh. for Mr. Wright. Really can't wait to see you with the clothes on. We like to start where a good date ends. Naked. Do you want to see a little bit more? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't seem as, uh, you know. That's a terrible trailer. The, I, I don't know why Max would cut a trailer like that that obscures everything when the show is total nudity, like close-up nudity. Anyway. Well, yeah, I guess they can't show that in there, you know. Yeah, wait, someone said, here's a headline, Naked Attraction Star Left with a Fart in Mouth after well, Daring that's, Sex Act went horribly wrong. That was what I was talking about, the fart in mouth thing. That's why I saw that. Okay, I don't, you know, I can't vouch for everybody on the show, guys. I just, I'm well, just- you're out here advertising. I'm not, I just, all I asked was, have you seen this show? And then it went crazy from there. And all I wanted to know was, have you seen it? I it, have not seen Naked Attraction. I, okay. I, I feel like then I'd be let's, uncomfortable. Let's okay. go back. Okay. All you had to say was, I haven't seen it. You know? Well, I say it again. Like, say it again. Set me up seen, for it again. Have you seen Naked Attraction? No. What's that? You don't want to know. Okay. Moving on. So, <laughs> Frasier is... <laughs> Wait. So, June is in the Frasier reboot. Fully clothed. Yes. June is in the Frasier reboot. She's in one episode of the Frasier reboot. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but... Uh, does she have the... scenes with Frasier? Oh, yes, yes, she does. May I ask, respectfully, yes. with love and respect, uh -huh. because I, I don't know Kelsey Grammer, mm -hmm. is Kelsey Grammer a monster? And I, I, I'm asking from a place of love. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to say this. That June came home from that he's shoot. He's a monster. And said, no. June came home from that shoot with such admiration and uh, and love for uh, for Kelsey Grammer. Like, oh. said he was oh. such a, an extreme gentleman and oh. lovely and funny and collaborative. And look, I think this is his show. You know, it's interesting because what do we know about Frazier? No one came back. That's oh. what we know. Like he's been trying to make this show for a long time oh. and no one came back. So I, I will go ahead and go out on a limb and say that he is a monster. Well, I don't mean like he, no, but to your point, people. he I was mean, a monster. A he was an dude. alcoholic when they were shooting Frasier originally. Oh, see, I, I don't know anything about off anybody. everybody. Yeah. Oh, so I yeah. think like this is all out in the open. And so I think he's doing a, a, a job here to say I've changed. And I'm coming okay. back, but it's it's really just it's just Frazier. I think um, I think that uh, the um, oh my gosh, she's so fantastic. Uh, who played his wife on the show? Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Uh, who's Frazier's wife? Everybody, help me out with that. Uh, Frazier's wife. Uh, Lil, uh, I, uh, New Earth. Baby Lilith. New Earth. Lilith. Yeah, Lilith. Uh, she comes back uh, in one episode, but 
ultimately it's just Frazier and his son. Uh, and in the episode that June is in, at least from, I know from reading the scenes with her when uh, she went in to do it, um, it is a blind date. They both have blind dates. And so June arrives. Wait, and June, the father... is a, June is a potential love interest for the character Frazier? Well, that's the, that's Paul. the episode, that's the episode revolves around who is she a blind date for Frazier or Frazier's son? son. So oh, it's like, it, it, like the whole episode I is this I don't drawing like... room comedy of who could it Paul, be? I'm going to say this with love and respect for you. Please, for please you. say with love, please. And for, <laughs> and for our friendship, our years of friendship, because we've been friends a long time. I don't like this guy, Frazier, and I don't like him snooping around your wife. A hundred percent. When I heard that, you know, I was a little bit, <laughs> June said that she might be a uh, love interest of Frazier. I was like, okay, oh. like God bless, but it was a little. I bet, uh, I bet you went into the garage and started up the lawnmower. You're riding lawnmower so that your family couldn't hear you. And you were like, no. I, I, I yeah, you, I, I, Frazier, never. Yeah. Uh, one of my great regrets was that I was not there for tape night. I don't remember where I was. Oh, I do remember. I think I was with you. Oh, that was probably during our Twitch show. Yeah, yeah. I'm on, sure. He did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was some reason why I couldn't. Why, why I couldn't have done it? What yeah. was it back in December when I we gave away a my, free car? There was something going. Yes, I think it was. I think that's when it was. It was. It, I think, yes, I think it was right around there. Something was going on. We okay. were together. Uh, but, Rob, enough about Frazier. Enough about Frazier. I'm sick of talking about, you know, questionable sitcom legends. I'd rather talk about current legends with legends. hot podcasts, topical. We're ready to do it. We have a guest. It's going to be great. Uh, please welcome Felicia Day. Oh, hey, I'm on screen. Hey, you you oh, are hey. on screen. Look at that. That's how quick we move. That's it. We're wow. in. Wow. I don't understand why Noom's TV and chat says, at Felicia Day be lurking. How, do you, how can you know I'm lurking? How do you know that? I don't know. Where are how they? How do they lurking? know? Maybe um, Molly. Know. Maybe Molly. Uh, uh, maybe our producer Molly dropped that you were in the waiting room. Oh, okay. I just want to know how that person is. Oh, uh -oh. no. Did not. No. Did not. How would someone, maybe because they knew that it was around the time. Oh, yes, because we had announced that you were coming. We had yeah, announced. Yeah, but how do you know what, how did they know I'm lurking? Like, how you're did not they, how in did danger. They... If, you're, if you're wondering if you're in danger, you're not. <laughs> you're, you're not, not in danger. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take your word for it. I how are you? you? How, how are, you? are you? Have you seen, let's just get this out of the way. Have you seen the TV show? naked attraction i have recently heard about it so the buzz okay. is going around i Great. don't like naked people thank I you do. that's it that's, that's, that's like too uncomfortable it's too uncomfortable i don't want to see it i feel uncomfortable yeah. for the person even yeah. if you're comfortable with it i feel like i shouldn't be looking at it I, uh, to me no one is that attractive like Correct. including myself I, I don't want to see my. I yeah. don't want to see myself are, naked. Other these people are all naked. All the right answers. These are Thank all you. the right answers. Put but, some clothes on it. But <laughs> I will tell you. And then when I say but, I'm using the one with one T, not two T's. Okay, okay. good one. You should <laughs> treat yourself to the first episode, and then decide, and then mm -hmm. just decide for yourself. This is not for me. I don't like it. But but it is a moment in television history. I think. That yeah, we that we have now crossed over that, and then you know we can't go back. I just like more of a skill based reality show. For me, okay. I need skills, so I need skills. pottery being done. I need yes. glass being blown. I oh, need wow. a, anything being baked. Uh, well, this, forging, is, this is this anything. is why I, I I like a good challenge, and this is why I have I love Survivor. I've come recently to loving Survivor, but I also am constantly frustrated by them because it seems like they know they're going to be going on Survivor. And yet no one brings any skill set to Survivor. Like they're not, they've not prepped in any way. Like I'd like to see Survivor with people who are like, 
are at least ready. Like they're like they're two days in and they're like, we're starving. Like they're they've not monitored themselves. They've not like gotten themselves prepared. Isn't there for, isn't there and, a, uh, an Amazon show where they just drop them in the wilderness and they're semi competent? Or is that yeah, oh, they, that's are alone. they not competent either? Alone. No, that alone be- is awesome. Okay. Alone is like they put them in the Antarctic and they're that's like figure it out and they're up there with no crew and they have to tape themselves and i met but some one of, of them women. some of them have skills and some of them think they have skills. okay all right and yes. you can kind of you, you can kind of like give up at any time but it's like all it is is like who's gonna last the longest yeah like by themselves all alone. it's a fascinating show it's a good show but also like plays havoc with your body like it just wrecks yeah, your no. body yeah, it's everybody, like, yeah. yeah 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 everybody it's like wrecks. it's like one of the jared leto and anything it's just a wreck you, <laughs> you go in any yeah, project you can't do wreck, it wreckage well it's like yeah. uh, matt uh matt damon always talks about this idea like he uh he was in this movie called courage under fire it's like a meg ryan movie great and movie. uh great movie and he like lost a ton of weight he's like a struggling actor at that point and he's like my body is still messed up from that one Perfor- like that wow. one time that when like I did that. That was first thing. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, what? Like, it's too much. It's too, you can't do it. I can't, like, I, I just don't understand how you, like, you, your body is never going to get back to normal. Like, didn't, I, that I happen, saw- didn't that happen to John Goodman? Like, wasn't he, didn't he gain a ton of weight for Roseanne like a million years ago? And then he, he was gained like, that weight. Yeah. I, he th- did? I mean, again, I'm not an expert on <laughs> television. We don't read. We these are things we we make statements. I, I like we don't to check spread out. rumors. Yes, I like to spread rumors that I might have heard someone else say. I I want to re- rewind to the fact that Paul said that he just got into Survivor. Aren't they on like season oh, 55? It's, it's a, yeah, 45. It's... Season 45. The show started in 2000. Oh God. Okay, we and have it... to talk about. He and, got his kids um, into it. His kids got into it, and now the whole family. Like, it's wow. a bummer. Well, it's a then bummer. my wife is a completionist, so she's like, we can't stop That's watching not a Survivor. Word. That's not a word. Completionist? That's not a word. Com- it is. is it's, a a it it's a gamer yeah. term. It's a gamer yeah. term. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There it is. You see? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not defending you about this Survivor thing. That's I, like, I just started watching General Hospital. I'm really into it. Like, that's By the way, I, I found myself. Years. I know. It's too. I found myself, honestly tapped into a whole other culture, a whole other world of people mm-hmm. that I did not know Survivor fans. There are tons of them. They're all in hiding because there's yeah. no one that like, until you know, like, oh, you like it. But I, it's the, the, the show is so successful that in season 45, they've expanded the episodes to 90 minutes. They're what? like, man, we got, yeah. They're like 90 minute episodes. It's getting has, more popular. Has anyone asked you to be on one of these reality shows, Paul? I would never do it. I mean, no, but had they asked you, because I was asked to be on Amazing Race with my brother. Whoa, whoa, Whoa. that's the show to be on. Oh, no. No? I have a good friend that was on it. And, uh, but I, uh, yeah, but, but why didn't you do it? I was pregnant at the time and I didn't want to lose my baby. Also, no, that's true. You should, that would be a terrible, terrible terrible show to be pregnant. Also, it was like an influencer thing. And, you know, I'm kind of one of those people who kind of skirts. I have one one leg in, one leg out. Like, and it's like that didn't feel like the right career move to go on. You know, I think I hear that. It is a definite move. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that, that is a very but specific career move. I will yeah. tell you, Felicia, if you ever want, sit back and enjoy the season of Survivor with Mike White. Wait, no, Mike no, White. He, no, he was in Amazing Race, right? No, Rob, he was in them both. Wait, what? Mike White, the creator of White Lotus? Yes. yes. And only three years ago, Mike what? White was on Survivor. And he's also on Amazing Race. Uh, and what? he is great on he is great on Survivor. And it's not a celebrity season. It's like Wait, you're an just, accountant from Ohio. Shows, shows you're a lawyer. Survivor? He 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 is a writer from Hollywood. Yes. He did, he, did he hire a PR agent to get him on these things? This is no, very strange. He talks about this like these are the things that he loves. And he was like, oh, yeah, my thing is I want to be on these shows. I want to do this thing. Uh, and he, I thought he had a great game on. And like I tell people now that that's the season you should start with because – it, the Mike White season is it dark Mike, but sardonic, but very very well, dark and funny. It, well, and... He, it's funny because it's like he's there, and it's just like like they don't even really center wow. him for like the first episode. It's like it's sort of like 
You're like, that's Mike White. And he's wow. there. And it's like, oh, he, he's, a, he's a screenwriter in Hollywood. You know, and this is... Um, he's like a like, very famous like, screenwriter. Yeah. And like in, at one point, he forms an alliance. And the guy's like, we're the rockers because of School of Rock. And they're like, wah, wah, wah. And they do this like little thing where they keep on like, referencing School of Rock. And oh, he wow. like just plays along with it. Um, wow. wow. Yeah. So he's, um, he was on it. And, and if you watch White Lotus, he cast members of the Survivor tribe that he was on in the show. Are you kidding? Whoa. Okay. That is wild. This yeah. is, I, I need to go rewatch it now. I mean, I yeah, love I his stuff. I actually got really close to, you know, I got two or three callbacks for one of his movies. Like, like oh, in the beginning gosh. of, I think Molly Shannon ended up playing it, but I've always been like, I got close to him. Just yeah. close. Just so close. I, I saw him, this is a million years ago, and I don't even know if I was even in entertainment then, but like I saw him at a hotel in Las Vegas, like in the gift shop. And I was like, oh shit, that's Mike White. And I never something? do that. Yeah, I never do this, but I was like, hey man, I'm a, you know, I love your shit. Or I, I tried to be so low key about it. I was like, Hey dude, like I really like love your shit or something like that. And he was not having it. Like he was like, uh-huh. Like Wait, just, what? You know, well, I think he's one of those people that is like not comfortable uh right. with that kind of interaction, you know. And I just took that as like, okay, yeah, that seems on brand. Like he's not that's, down that's a that. horrible feeling though for you, right? You know, just inside, yeah. you're like, ooh. Oh, yeah, I did. I didn't I think know, of, oh, I know. I know. I mean, have the, you I, ever treated? Have you ever? Have you ever done that? Like, I. I'm, I did. I. It makes uh, me think about that. Like, have I done that when someone? James like, Cromwell was at a stage. I was scouting for a big web thing, and okay. I. I love Babe. It's my oh, favorite yeah, movie. Okay. It's, uh, I play it's the song so good. that he sings to the pig what? when I need to cry on set. So oh. I saw James Cromwell. And I went up to him, and I'm not kidding. I put my hand in his. Total stranger, by the way. And I was Shut like, "Shut up!" I loved you, and babe. And I started no. weeping. <laughs> no, no. Wow. Is, and he this acted is... exactly like you think you would act. Cause yeah. I'm a crazy woman. Put <laughs> no. That's alarming. That is alarming. I that it, is it, it, way it's... too much. But. There's something about it that's too much. also very sweet because he's a sweet guy. And, you know, I, I, I oddly did two very weird events with James Cromwell that happened to be like separated by about three or four weeks. So I never met him before and I saw him twice. And he's such an animal activist and uh, a vegan and very passionate about animals. So I imagine that, you know, in a way it like that's you you're like he can respect it but i also feel like he, he it was creepy i'll admit <laughs> it it was we didn't even get to the point where i could show any depth as a person and also he was right. scouting for something like it was not like yeah, a public yeah, appearance yeah. yeah it's hard it's hard yeah. to oh, it's hard to tell so people large. that you like it and it enveloped me in such a beautiful <laughs> oh, way it was the way like, you're talking about his hand and it, its size is upsetting just went over it's mine. all it's it all like so a spoon. upsetting a warm I, sausage spoon. Do I, you I, have, are, are there people that have done that to you? Like have been a little too, um, you know how people do. Sometimes they get, if you're not in LA or you're not in New York, like sometimes people get a little too excited to see you at a random mall, you know, or you're at a restaurant or you're with your friend or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get that yeah. a lot. I get that a yeah. lot with baristas. For some reason, yeah. that's my demo. Barista <laughs> yeah. demo. Yeah. Um, I, I've at conventions, I've had people reveal tattoos of myself on their bodies, which has wow. been a little bit, but That's they always lot. get good work done. You know, I look great yeah. on their bodies. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the thing about you and we're gonna talk about this brand new, uh, podcast you have, but the, this idea that you, you have done it all. And you are also, uh, I think what you are really amazing at is you do things that are very, DIY like that are like this is you that you're going to put it forward and you do these other very big things and then you also have a, a giant following across like all these platforms and I think that when you or at least I can say that when I I have I feel like similar things where people are like I am zeroing in on something very specific that I know of you but I can't yeah. quite place it um, and I always go to this one guy at the airport who stopped me and said Robin Williams. And I said, 
No. <laughs> he goes, I won't, Wait. I won't blow, I won't blow up your spot. You're Robin <laughs> Williams. Oh no. <laughs> and I was like, and now Robin Williams had been dead at this point. And I and I said, Oh no, no, I'm not. And he's like, Okay, okay. And I was like, what are mind, you talking like, about? There was just he's a misfire in his mind. Williams. It was a misfire. It was like in his mind, it was like, this guy is a comedian. I know him. And Robin Williams came to the fore. Like, I understand. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh, you're on The Daily Show. And I'm like, yes, I am. I'm not going to sit there and, like, debate it. Like, whatever you know of, like, I'm I'm there. I'm there. Like, you know, and, but. It's going to claim Williams, credit like, and walk away. Just claim I, exactly. credit and walk away. I don't need to justify what I was in or Patches! why. Patches! You know? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and oh, and no. then, and then at the end, I gave him a fist bump. He goes, uh, nice to meet you. I said, nice to meet you. I, I'm not going to correct. I will not correct it. June. Uh, always makes fun of me because I won't, I don't, uh, I just lean in. I lean into yeah, there's no, whatever. I, I don't think the, the correcting of, of people is really, that leads to a whole other thing. Yeah. I've I mean, had I, people do that. I've had people yeah. like Devil Meets Prada. They brought me a DVD to sign. I'm like, I'm not Emily Plun. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Wish I right, was. Right. You're right. <laughs> it would have been great. Not but me. you know what? Just sign it, and then they can go around and say they met Emily Blunt. Like, <laughs> I, like I, I'm, I, I will always, I, and I know because I'm like the story is the better story. The, the the awkward story is, oh, I'm not that person, and they go, uh, oh, and then I'm like, I'm just, I'm always just like, here we go, take it and I go. Let's, like, we got. I, it. I've, I've told Paul this. I've told him this story before, but I did a thing with um, uh, Marshawn Lynch, who's a big football player from oh, the N- NFL, and uh, I was shooting with him for a couple of days and we were hanging out a lot and he was a very sweet guy, super funny, like could not have been cooler. And at the end of the thing, he was like, I just want to tell you, like, I'm a huge fan. Like I'm a huge fan. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> like, thank you. That's so cool. He was like, yeah, like I, you know, I really love all, all of your movies. I was like, okay, that's really cool. Marshawn. Thank you so much. He's like, yeah, man, like naked gun, like all of your shit. And I was like, Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, you think I'm Leslie Nielsen? And he was like, "You're not Leslie Nielsen." And I was like, "Marshawn, Leslie Nielsen has been dead for ten years." <laughs> I mean, it was like I hated to correct him. Oh, like no. I hated it. Oh, it it's also so it crazy wild. because it's like I can understand, like on some base level, like you're very funny, Rob, and you can and you and you have like the look of a leading man. You can play that thing. Like I can understand, like and a and a yeah. thing, but it's also like. Leslie Nielsen is so marketably like it's so much. I old. mean, I'm I'm prematurely gray, and I think at that time I had it was during the pandemic, and I had just let my hair go gray, so I was very like hypersensitive to it. All you had a real George, Pap- you have a very real George Papard sort of uh, <laughs> quality yeah. to you right now. Like I love it. Anyone with gray, so yeah, I just had to like you know be polite about it. I was like, oh, I I actually love Leslie Nielsen. I am not Leslie Nielsen. And, and uh, I, <laughs> um, um, I want to, I want to talk to you about this, this thing. Cause it, it's not a, your next, your new project is not a, a book per se, but you can listen. Like, I love the, what this is, what's going on here, because basically I'm a big uh, audible person. So I, I listen to a lot of stuff on audible. I think audible is doing very cool things right now. And you are part of this, like these things that are like, they're immersive storytelling. It's like a, like an audio book to the it's, nth degree, right? It's, it's like it's TV for your ears. Yes, One of my I love that. Actually, right. said that it is TV for your ears, and yeah, it's it's kind of strange. People don't know exactly how to wrap your heads around it. It's you can either think of it as a audio TV show, or right. you can think of it as an audio book that's fully performed. You know, it's either way. Um, we tell it in chapters. I essentially wrote it as ten episodes of a television series. You wrote and- this. Oh yeah. yeah, I wrote it. I oh wrote it. God. 400 and something pages. I love it. Wow. I love it. And it was the TV show I always dreamed of starring in, but Paul, as you know my career, nobody ever puts me on a poster. They just, you know, they just, this is this is, I you mean, know, thank you. You got to make you got to make your own posters. You got to look at the I cover did. of this book. It's amazing. This third eye is the it's a great uh, wait, let's see if we can pull it up i, I, I have it well Ooh. we'll pull it up in a second yeah we got we got it we got assets there is but, a billboard on sunset boulevard which i did yeah i stopped by it i was like look at me look at me i was so excited about this because it's there's something about it that's i think it's also you got this amazing voice cast to tell the story we'll talk about the story too but the voice cast is like it is just like neil gaiman is doing a voice in this which is 
awesome. <laughs> and you have like, great. Uh, you have Will Wheaton and Danny Putty, uh, Pudi, uh, you have Alan Tudyk, Kate Micucci, uh, Harvey Gillen. It's like, you just have this crazy, amazing cast and you get to actually make the thing that you really want to make. And this is something that I'm, I'm just always fascinated by. It's like, yes, you're not like, it's so hard to make an interesting show that's like potentially hard to sell, but you could actually do it here and cast people that you actually want to put in it. There it is. That's the awesome. There I am. There. It's not really my body, but it's okay. They photoshopped well. Um, <laughs> yeah, it. no, I mean, uh, if you don't know that I, I, I wrote a show called The Guild, which was one of the first scripted web series I did for six years. And I made my own TV show because, again, nobody yes. would make that TV show. And I did that for six years. And then I ended up running a company and selling it to Legendary. And then that took me into a whole sort of unscripted area. And I left that company when I had a kid, 2018, because I just couldn't juggle it all. And the la the journey since I mean I I'm I've been working on this project since 2019. I I pitched as a television show in 2015. It wow. did not go well, <laughs> <laughs> as does every television pitch I ever did. Uh, I think they're great ideas, but pitching I, pitching a TV show is a whole other skill set. I I think that like has nothing to do with the idea or who's attached to it or who is directing or it's like. Just the presentation of it, it, like, did you pitch it over Zoom or did you put like? No, I pitched I, it in person. You know, but I pitched so a lot. Hard. I've written, I've written things for television, yeah. and like this process has really taught me that, like, I'm a good actor. I'm a good host. I'm gonna write my own crap on the side because I just want to make stuff exactly the way I want to make it. I'm not yeah, like totally. interested in notes. I, I will well, make my income hopefully with my face. And then that all subsidizes the things I want to do, which is writing. So my, I also think side. what I love about it is like, I think interesting ideas have to be so kind of like, unless you be, unless you are going back to Mike white, like you have some cachet where people are like, well, we just trust yeah. whatever Mike is going to do. Go do it. Even though I've heard that like White Lotus was in response to HBO saying no to another project. So it's, wow. uh, it's happening. It's happening everywhere. Yeah. Right. People can't get their stuff out there and it's hard to pull people in. I remember when I was developing uh, Galaxy Quest, which is an idea that was IP. It's an idea that really made me go. I never want to do IP ever again, which is just intellectual property that people have. Because first of all, with IP, you have to deal with everybody's reason of why they like it, which becomes really hard. It's like, are you answering for them? And no, then majority of people, I was, it's awful. And then the people that I was working with were not sci-fi fans oh, no. at all. So I was making jokes about like how we could kind of attack Star Trek and Marvel and do all this stuff. And they were not getting it. And it's like, once you start so to So frustrating. Feel... I did Red Sonja for uh, Bob Weinstein oh. and Brian Singer. It was a great oh. experience. Yeah. Oh, see, like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that was that's... when I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. That was 2018. Yeah. I was like, I'm done. This is not it... for me. I'm an actor. Why am I doing this? I'm. It's too hard. And it's like, and just Ugh. tell the stories that you want to tell. And then maybe someone will be able to make it. That's why I made my first comic book because I was like, here's a script I can't make. But this is like, if you don't get people who are on the same page as you, yeah, your idea is done. And if your idea is more complicated than, uh, you know, a guy who's in prison gets a giant tattoo of the prison on his body is going to escape the prison. You know, it's like, you know, if it's, you know, it's like if it's not like so. Yeah. Or like it's a, it's a guy in the Midwest with a wife. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. he's, got, he's got kid problems. Yeah. But, and if, it feels like the trick or the sweet spot is to just like find someone anyone that will pay you to make your shit you know what i mean like and then yeah. just make it make it the way that you want to make it without any interference and it's impossible it's so hard well, that's, i mean it's that's like, what i was able to do with audible like i don't yeah, think yeah. this version of the show which is you know it's about a chosen one who fails so it's a fantasy comedy and um you know it's not like uh I think it's a cool twist on the genre and it was my dream character to play. And when it didn't sell, I was so devastated because I'm like, you're idiots. I mean, in my yeah. mind, my, I have great ideas. You're just all idiots. So, uh, but I did get the opportunity in 2019. They, I, I sold this and then over COVID, I just wrote it all by myself because of COVID I was just kind of alone and isolated and I wrote like 400 plus pages. And I was like, this is the best experience of my life, even though I would never have done this voluntarily <laughs> yeah right right crazy, yeah crazy and i made it i made the show i made exact i had the cast i want and mostly all friends that i just called in and 
Um, and I'm on the poster. Like, again, nobody will put me on the goddamn poster. I will make what? my own posters. <laughs> I, I love, but I love this. I love the premise of this because it's something that we haven't really seen, right? The chosen one who fails is to me like a really, like just a, like a, <laughs> such a comedically rich present, like a premise. It's like this idea of just going in and you have this like amazing uh, team in here too, right? Like you have this, like you are, you, you have this like public backlash and then kind of uh, set up to try again a little bit. Like that's the- A little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, basically, you know, you choke. Like you're- right. I mean, kind of Harry Potter and Voldemort takes over because you screwed it. You know, like, how do you live <laughs> with yourself? Right. And that was kind of the premise. And I was at kind of a low point in my life. And so I was able to put some of my personal stuff into it. And then a lot of it is about turning tropes on their heads. Like the chosen one is usually fated to win. Right. Even though, you know, what if you lose? Uh, as Sean Astin plays a vampire with no fangs and he's paunchy and he has like self-esteem issues and like, you know. <laughs> How's that? And then my best friend is Sybil. Uh, she's a fairy princess, but she's trashy and she's uh, pansexual and really, and she likes to grift people. And so like, I took a lot of tropes of fantasy and sci-fi and I just wanted to kind of flip them on their head in a fun way. And I got to say that, of course, when you cast people, you know, as a writer, um, yeah. when, you, when people start saying your words, you're like, oh, this is this is really good, guy. Yeah. You made it better. So, like the cat, I will say the cast makes it sore. And having Neil Gaiman as a narrator is like I couldn't believe he said yes. I was like, "Will you do this for me?" And he was like, "I will do it, not because I'm doing you a favor, but because it's very good." And I just started crying oh, from that email. <laughs> Isn't that I love crazy? That. I cried. Like, to me, writing is. I mean, I don't know. I think it's the fucking hardest thing in the world. I think it's so hard to write something that's good or meaningful or like connects with people or is funny. I think it's so hard. And when you like actually like birth it out there and then you hear people say it, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, oh, it's yeah, like, this might it's like the best be thing in the good. world. Yeah. It's you know, crazy. I spent several years, you know, I spent many years doing just low budget, you know, internet stuff. Yeah. Like my company was supposed to be doing TV shows for web. And, you know, we did amazing shows like Tabletop and like they were very big and glossy for the web. And then the collapse of the web, you know, because Paul, yeah. you were you were doing a lot. Of, like the collapse of the web series. It's like, oh, you need to do it for $5 and get 5 million views. They're just like, what? Yeah. So you're just kind of pooping out content all the time. And it wasn't what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make, you know, and so for me, I'd rather make one thing every five years than make 10,000 things in a year that because that one thing might last a little bit, you know, might last like somebody in five yeah. years hopefully will listen to this. And it actually, and it actually stays, you know, it stays around too. I mean, you also wrote two books, you know, like, like there's something about like, like the permanence of things like this. It, like I've, I've been having a whole big issue lately. It was funny because Rob and I like, we have this show that we did when we first started off, we started doing the show human giant and you can't find it anywhere streaming right now. So upsetting. And that's and it sucks because it's like it's there, it's you know it's available, but no one will you not no one will even put it out. It's like how do you even find it? And there was a point where we couldn't even find the episodes. And then I I, I did a lot of research, and I I long story short, someone found them in a janitorial closet in the MTV building like what? three years ago. The yes, the hard of, drive, yeah. all the hard drives of our show, everything that we had in like on the floor of a janitor's closet. Oh my God. That could have been like thrown out and gone forever. Forever. Oh, and that's what awful. it is, man. That's what it is. These companies are just like farting out content. They don't care. It's like, just fill the hole. Just keep filling the hole. Who else? Who else wants to throw something into the hole? It's like, yeah, it's wild, man. So when something actually resonates with people or like, connects with people like I get like so excited because it's just like I don't care if something is a huge hit if just if like the people just if like the small little sliver of people that like get yeah. it you know it's like oh those people get it you know it's so yeah hard. I mean it's like you know uh, there is no mass popularity anymore like I don't no. feel like yeah. anything's taking anything over and especially when you have these really short order of of tv shows people don't People don't get to know the characters. They don't get to love them. Like I, yeah. I almost am like everything should just be Law and Order and Friends. You know, like 
Go back yeah. to making content that fill up fills up my week so that I can get to know people and care about the characters. Well, this is the whole thing when people are watching Friends in the Office mm -hmm. because there are like multiple, multiple seasons, 24 episode yeah. seasons. No one like no one's like even Suits was like a multiple, yeah. multiple seasons. It's like people need time. Like you yeah. need time to invest in like. And I, I think that was one of the benefits of like Shit's Creek. It was like it's slowly built, but it's so hard. To have anyone like allow you to do that, like you know, no. even with well, this brings you know, me back to Naked yeah. Attraction, guys. Naked Attraction. Oh, <laughs> I know what you guys are thinking. You think like, oh, I don't like to look at dicks, but you know, <laughs> can't we give it a try? I have can't to tell you, Baldur's Gate Three. I don't know, Paul, if you played this game, but you can pick your dicks. Not. You can you can have graphic nudity in it. Oh, I and did they, not know this. You can have an uncut or a cut pee pee. And I oh, was wow. a little traumatized when I saw that. I was like, "Oh, right. why not have the choice, right?" I mean, look, we like we're we're personalizing Euro our friendly. character. Euro-friendly, exactly. <laughs> you, you can really go there. So I guess I should um, overcome it. If I can see a tiefling naked, I could probably see whoever's on this naked attraction show. Let Let me ask naked. you one question, and we have a game to play with you. If you have a couple seconds more, but uh, yeah. the the um, when you're recording a book like this, because you 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 spent your time writing it, I always feel like it's interesting because then you record it and you hear something you're like all right that doesn't work that does work were you able to tweak it or was it treated more like a book on tape would be like you can't like really tweak a book and it's recording like yeah how much no, flexibility no, no, did no. you have to play with it yeah i mean i wrote them like they're mostly 44 page scripts so it's like right. a cw hour right and so yeah. um we would definitely get in and i mean i would say that i I spent so long with the scripts, like just, re you know, I yeah, wrote yeah, everything at once. So I will say that there wasn't a lot to catch. Um, right. But sometimes the actors would improv something. Sometimes, you know, when Neil's reading something, he's like, well, that doesn't work. I'm like, change it, change it, Neil. Just change oh, it. I love <laughs> it. That's great. No, but that's that's amazing because you're able to like at least, you get to, yeah, every now and then it might sound good in your head and not saying like a whole rewrite, but it's like that little like word tweaks and things like that, I think are always. Oh, for sure. And, yeah. you know, if you were doing a TV show, you'd have to get, you know, tr we, you'd have to get permission for anything, right? Yeah, but yeah. Audible was fantastic. I will say that having had some very traumatic uh, development ex experiences in LA that just basically drove me away from television writing, which is fine. I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I will say that Matt Patterson, the Audible exec, who was a writer before, he's like amazing to work with. And his notes were like, I was like, oh, oh, he's, this is a good idea. Oh, I'm so excited. And I was so, so I mean, crazy. That's so, so weird. Rare. Yeah, yeah, so rare. So, and honestly, they just help, you know, in my experience of writing books and book editors and Audible, I don't know if it's analogous, but like the, 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 the role of a book editor is to make what exists the best that it can be. Right. In television, it's to make what exists what they need it to be. Right. And so a book editor's feedback is usually very additive. It's very helpful. It's usually helping you kind of take what you want to say and make it better. And I found that experience with the Audible situation, as well as getting the flexibility and trust to be like, hey, yeah, we're going to just change this line or, you know, yeah, we're going to take yeah. this out. And it was great. It was very fun. And a lot of the times I, I tried to have as many actors together as possible to record. There's a couple of romance. And I wanted to make sure that those characters were together recording, even though they're in different booths so we can overlap. They are right. acting together and, and having that energy. And I think it makes a lot of difference because in my experience, audio performances like that can be kind of boring and stilted because people aren't there. And with comedy, yes. the timing uh -huh. is so important. So like, yeah, we did as much as we could under COVID conditions to have people act together. And I think it really paid off. No, I think, Rob, you do that with Bob's Burgers, right? Yeah, I mean, I love that any kind of show that does, like um, specifically comedy, I think really needs that. You really need like the other person there. And then, you know, you obviously just come up with like a little bit of like a rhythm and you end up kind of coming up with new stuff. But yeah, comedy really benefits from having people there. And yeah, Bob's Burgers does that. They try to get everybody on the and, and those people live all over the place. Some live in L.A., some live in Boston, some live in New York, but they wow. try to like get them all there at the same time. So it really helps, I think. I love yeah. it. All right. So I don't know where you fall on Taylor Swift, but obviously this is. Look, we're in the middle of a writer's strike, but Taylor Swift's saving cinema. She's, <laughs> you know, she's on, she's on football. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Taylor Swift fan. I went, I, I loved it. 
and we wanted to test your Taylor Swift knowledge. But where do you fall on the Taylor Swift bandwagon? If you're not on the bandwagon, it's fine. But uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I do appreciate Tay Tay from afar. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that's fine. Yeah, my that's knowledge good. is shallow at best. I Me know too. that Me she um, writes her own stuff, which I admire. Right. She uh, dresses well. She mm -hmm. has good politics that she uses carefully to manipulate. Yes. I yeah. think that's uh, great. You know, not manipulate, but just steer people Engage. in the right direction. Yeah, Engage. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't sing one of her songs. I think I had to learn one for like a voiceover audition. And well, all I... this is, all this game is, is, okay. is this a Taylor Swift lyric or some other loser? Oh, okay. That's all it is. So right. you okay. so we're going to give, you, we're gonna give you a lyric yeah. from a song. Let's do it. Just Let's the do words. It. As a okay. writer, you'll know the words and, right, are and, and And we'll start off, we'll start it off pretty easy, right? So... Okay. Uh, this one is like, uh, okay. Okay. I got a long list of, li I have got a long list of ex-lovers. They'll tell you I'm insane. Cause you know that I love the players and you love the game. Is that a Taylor is Swift? Taylor or someone else? That sounds like somebody else. It's not okay. poetic enough. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Molly, I mean pop it up. What do we got? That Taylor. is, that is Taylor. That's blank space. Oh That's no. Taylor. Okay. Oh, no. That's okay. We're, we're, this is it. This is fine. That's a, I, failure. I, I, that's a failure. That's not a tailor. That's a that's a failure on your part. <laughs> okay, here we go. Right. Next one. Oh, this is horrible. These are okay. hard. Is this Taylor or is this some other loser? Uh-huh. This my shit. All the girls stomp your feet like this. Few times been around that track, so it's just not gonna happen like that. Cause I ain't no holler back girl. I ain't no oh, holler no, back. No, girl. no, no. I I <laughs> Taylor I know that song. or some other loser. <laughs> Some other, some other it's loser. It's a some yeah. other loser. Okay, good. She's Taylor. happy with me. Not, not Taylor. <laughs> She's very happy. Not Taylor. By the way, Taylor just rolled up uh, for all of a, We have a, a giant Monday Night Football fan uh, fandom here. Or sorry, Thursday Night Football fan. Uh, she just pulled up to the game. She's there tonight. My uh, wife was furious that Taylor shut down the Grove yesterday. The Grove is, for people that don't know, in LA, it's a good, big it's a good mall. mall. Good yeah, it's a mall. good it's a good mall no, and good taylor shut it down because she was or maybe it was her movie premiere was yesterday yes so well the by the way mall was closed down wow my my friend uh and film critic amy nicholson uh went to go cover the premiere she doesn't often cover premieres she covers you know she, she writes for new york times she's awesome she was told that she was going to cover the taylor swift movie premiere they wouldn't give her the address until uh, three hours before the premiere. They said it was in Hollywood. Uh, she didn't know where she was going because it was such a high profile event. Like Beyonce was there, Taylor was there, uh, Adam Sandler was in the crowd. Like it was, at, and, but it was just at the movie theater at the at the, the Grove. Grove. Yeah, the Grove movie theater. Like even the nicest Grove movie theaters. <laughs> it's like, it's like when you saw her up on stage, it was like, this is not really. Uh, it's super the Grove. That's where my kid, you know, had a poopy yeah. diaper right there. Yeah. Uh, the my question like... is, how do you live like that? Like, she's not going to get her coffee, right? Like, she can't just stroll down the street. Well, That's all. You know about the popcorn machine, right? I don't know about the pop. I don't no. even know. Oh, about okay, enough. Molly, can you find Molly needs to find this? All right. So, two things that are really interesting about Taylor Swift is that she, when she enters into her shows, she enters in in a janitorial uh, cart. So uh -huh. it's like a okay. black box with like mops and brooms in it that it says mean, like, like trying to like sneak in, like trying to blend yes. in. So like, so she's not like pushing like, the car. Oh, like she's not like, she's not like, like, no, yeah. She's not like, she's inside the cart. Like they have to push her in and out. Uh, like she's and so, trash. She's trash. Well, yeah. Molly, do you have a clip? Cause you can see this is there, there, this is how she gets in and out of uh, venues. So let's see here. And then, oh, okay. So then when mom. she went to, Okay. Oh, so pause box? this for one second. So, so in this, oh. when she went to go see Travis Kelsey, she hid in a popcorn box. So here's the popcorn box. What? So well, why, why have I seen clips of her walking in with Kelsey? Well, that was when she was walking out. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. So this is. Um, so this that's is like, that's that's the, that's, no. that's the yeah that's her cart. You'll you, you'll see her get out of it. Yeah, I've seen footage of her walking out of this cart. See, yeah, you'll see, right? Watch, really you, see the, the, you can see her. Watch, watch, watch her get out there. She just shut the fuck Oh my up. god, that's a horrible so, way to live, right? So I don't yeah, know. So you never get to go to that's the. That's how I live. That's exactly <laughs> how I live. That's exactly well. There was a 
there is a YouTube influencer, content creator or whatever, uh, who did a bit where it was like, what is it like for a celebrity to walk around? And so he got this girl who looked a little bit like Taylor Swift and she walked around Disneyland and she was mobbed oh, to the yeah, point where they, they did an interview afterwards. And she was like, it was the most frightening thing I've ever experienced. Horrible. Like, and I was like, oh, wow, that is like. That's that girl that like kind of looks like her, but is now like wow. sort of making herself look more making like her. Making herself look more Taylor yeah. Lap, so yeah. she oh, can be mobbed my. for whatever reason. Wow. I mean, that like that seems, I mean, yeah, I think that would be really that would be warping I mean, it would be warping i guess you know i mean in a sense like i guess she doesn't care if she's got all the but you know i don't i don't know i like but then but then but then i see I know, her yeah but then i, I see her at like target life. yeah with like yeah. yeah like tom hiddleston like i feel like she can do it outside i feel like i feel like if she comes in i feel like she is popping in because then she's always going out to dinner in new york yes yeah, always going she, out you know I don't know. Is she really dating that guy or is this some kind of stunt thing? Like what's going I think on with it's, them? I think we're being played. I think yeah. it's a promotion for her movie and for the NFL. I mean, the she NFL doesn't is like, need it. She <sighs> doesn't need it. But it's addictive. I, it's addictive. But, but you don't think, addictive. you don't, I mean, you're right. She doesn't need it, but the NFL is the biggest marketing machine in america like i think it's it's i think it's convenient that she's dating him but i also think like travis but Kelsey how did is they like how did they meet like how would well, they he have, he wanted to meet shot. her yeah. yeah he called he like was like really? shouting her out and stuff I tell yeah you he basically I said i tell you who i don't like and i'm gonna who? go on the record i don't oh. like his mom i am sick oh, yeah. what no. and travis, Tired kelsey's mom? travis kelsey's no. mom Oh, popping no, up in no. my soup commercials and my Allstate Why? commercials. Why? Why is she there? She's Why very she there? judgy. She's I am very not judgy. gonna date you. It, I wanna... it, it's so funny the that like thing. the mom. It's like because it, it, the mom now has to be on the front page of everything too. Like they're like the this is the uh, hold on. I got this. I don't like. I, I don't like it at, when moms like. I don't like the the Jenner. What's her face? I don't like oh, it yeah, when Kristen. moms are like, let's get famous together. It's creepy. No, I, don't okay? no, I mean, like, look at this. <laughs> Yeah. Look at like that. A, Why is she there? A, I, uh, like, she's there tonight, uh, and the mom is there. The mom's at every one of Travis's games. But I, what I, you know, it's it's a weird thing because they haven't watch, dated long enough for her to hang out with his mom all that much. Not at the all. first date. I the agree. first date. They, that no. would be so weird. No, so I weird. I think moms in general. I'm just going to go out on a limb here, Paul. I think moms in general are overrated. Hey, and do Rob. We, do Rob. We, <laughs> Do you tell you me. Are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's like, um, what's going on in the garage? Nothing, yeah. nothing, my love, nothing, my queen, my Holding queen. Holding a little, a little yeah. knife out there. What? All right, wait, we forgot about our game. Okay. Oh, here, sorry. Keep, sorry, yes. sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. We'll do one more. Yeah. Here's another lyric. Okay. okay. All right, here Taylor, we go. I got one for you. Okay, Taylor yeah. or failure. Okay. All right, here okay. we go. Uh, this one is this one. I wake up screaming from dreaming. One day, I'll watch as you're leaving, cause you got tired of my scheming for the last time. Wow. Um, I'm gonna say I liked the scanning of that. It seems yeah. very flavorful. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of rhymes. I do feel like it's Taylor. Okay, let's just say. All right, Molly. Okay. Yeah, Yay! you got one. You got okay. one. You got one. Yeah. Right, we're on the board. You're on the board. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, Here we yeah, go. Yeah. Rob, you got one? Okay, yeah. Let me get one. All right. um, I got one ready to go. Okay. Loosen it up. Yeah, loose, get ready for loose, it. Loose. Okay. Taylor, All right. Taylor or failure? Okay. Right. Hear what I say. We are the business today. Fuck shit is finished today. What are T and J? We are the new P and P B and J. We dropped a classic today. We did a tablet of acid today. Lit joints with the matches and ashes away. <laughs> it doesn't feel on brand for her. No. Just doesn't feel on brand for that her. Was, I'm gonna say some other loser. Yeah, that was oh. run the jewels. That was okay. run the jewels. You got that. Yeah, one. I mean that one Paul's, felt like Paul's gonna Paul's gonna hear that song perform tonight live. In- I'm gonna wow. go see Run the Jewels. I'm excited to go see Run the Jewels. Uh but uh, I'm going by myself. Uh, I, I, my, I was like, my wife isn't going to go with me. I should have invited Rob. Uh, I but I just was it. like, I You're should going just solo go. to a show? That feels very awkward. I it does. I, I know. I'm like, I, I, I'm already 
like justifying how I'm going to talk myself out of it. But I know the set time. So I'm like, if I just go in, I've done it before. I saw Mannequin Pussy uh, by myself and it was a lovely experience. I just have to, I got to hole up, find a spot where I'm comfortable and listen. And then, yeah, I, 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 I can, I can do it. I think I can do it. We'll see. I'm nervous. It's so, I mean, I personally hate concerts. Okay. I don't, I don't like what? it. What? You don't like, don't music? like concerts. I was okay. a musician. My first half of my my for half of my life, I was a classical musician. Whoa! So wow. I just need to know. I was I was a violinist. So I need to know. I need a program. I need to okay. know when things are, and I don't need people to withhold the one song I want to hear until the encore. That really angers me. I like to sit down. Mm. You know, I like cleanliness. I don't like people uh, bumping me. Wow. There's a litany of things that do these are not weird ticks. These are weird ticks. No, not compatible with. Popular music. Well, I got to tell you, I did see that Taylor Swift concert, which was three and a half hours, I believe. It started at, yeah, and it was, um, it went, flew by, wildly flew by. Uh, But I like a spectacle. Beyonce is still my favorite. Like, I think Beyonce and Dolly Parton uh, and Taylor now are like the three best shows I've ever seen. Okay. Um, And uh, and for all different reasons. Did you have a seat? Did you have a seat? I did, and I do like a seat. See, like okay, seat. if you you're already like sixty percent there with me having a seat, okay, and yeah. like you're talking about like a large spectacle. That's like a different category of a concert to me. You know, the sort of like it's a club or even, you know, it's just gathering and people are standing. I don't. What about I don't one, like I don't like that. One, what about the one in Las Vegas? The big. Uh, Ooh, the I want to see that. I want to go that dab really badly. Okay, okay. so you want to go to that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that you want to have, so you have a seat. You have to have a seat. They're do they don't have seats there. They no, they do. Seats. They do. They do. Have See, seats. I'm sold. You sold okay. me. Okay. Okay. Wait. Here, last lyric. Okay. Oh yeah, I got one here. Let me. I got this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This one. All right. This one. Okay. Because I've made some real big mistakes, but you've made the worst one look fine. I should know it was strange. You only came out at night. Hmm. Because I've made some real big mistakes. Ooh, but you make going. the worst keep ones going. look fine. I, I, I should have known it was strange. You only come out at night. Okay. So I feel like that's a Taylor song. Now you get points here, either answer, because Molly, what do we got? Ah! Not Uh-oh. a Taylor song. Uh-oh. It's an Uh-oh. Olivia Rodrigo song. It's Vampire. Oh, uh, Vampire Whoa. from uh, She's, from. Guts. I love. Why do I not know that? I like her okay. voice. I'm Here you cool. go. Here you go. This one uh-huh. is pretty hard, but a good one to end on. I think. Okay, great. Okay. Is this Taylor or some failure? Back in black, I hit the sack. I've been gone too long. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Yes, I'm let loose from the noose that kept me hanging about. I've been looking at the sky because it's getting me high from the hearse because I never die. I got nine lives, cat's eyes, abusing every one of them and running wild. Back in black. I'm back in black. Okay. 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 You were right. You were right. So about I was that. better was at eliminating Taylor than I was identifying Taylor. You did okay. a great job. You did. Here's a great what I'll say job. about your guesses. Uh, Taylor's that versatile that she could carry any of those lyrics. She could carry those lyrics. I enjoy several of her songs. I won't say that I'm proficient in them, but when I listen to I'm them, not, I'm like, oh, who's yeah. that? I really like. I'm her. not either. I'm the same way. I don't really seek her out but my wife loves her and now my daughter is getting into this i'm, so I'm like I, i'm going in i'm going i'm in. all in i got all in i went to her show as a fan i left yeah. as a super fan the wow. albums oh are gosh. very good the wow. albums are very good and i think uh she's an auteur like she's a I like one female debating, auteur i like that we're debating the most successful person. But it ever. is. It's like, I'm always fascinated because it's interesting because it's like, there's a cult of personality. <laughs> I think the thing that I got so caught up on, and this is something that uh, we can all do in our own time. You look at who she dated and then the songs that she wrote about them. And it is like, it's like reading the most gossipy memoir. You're I like, whoa, it. wee. I love it. It's like, it's like, and, they're, and they're, it's biting. It's cruel. Like there are some lines in there about some, and I won't, I, you know, you can, you can find it all there. I mean, what does she compose? She's, I think she's banking some football ones. Like you threw me. Oh, like, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You threw well, me is, like you do. 
you know? Yeah. I mean, we this could get is, some football yeah. analogies. Oh, I oh, mean, yeah. we, you fumbled, but by the way, it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's going to say like yes? the Chiefs. I mean, she's going to, she, there's going to, yeah, they, there will be like, uh, you never you scored. No yeah. Yeah. You, you, scored? you oh. run. You always tried to run mm-hmm. away from. I do want to give you guys kept an moving. update. <laughs> I want to give you an update, a live sports update. This is because this show, you know, we cover pop culture and sports. Sports, evidently the chiefs are winning 13 to nothing at halftime so when she's wow. in whatever, attendance whatever taylor is doing she's bringing it when she's in attendance things are going well when she's it's not the estrogen level the estrogen level in, yep. the, in the in the stadium is. is higher is it. yes. it's ambient estrogen really makes men uh you know maybe some women are ovulating and that's going to make yes. the men play better you know it could just be i, I, I a think pheromonal it's out there thing. yeah now let me ask you Correct. one final question we'll let you go and again we we'll just remind everybody that you can get third eye on audible uh i love audible you are not gonna be disappointed because i'm like i have really segued a little bit away from podcasting or not podcasting but listening to podcasts to be listening to a lot of these audible books i just have been a big big fan so knowing that you were doing this uh, I, and and I'm excited, and it's great. It's out right now. Third Eye. It's on Audible. Thank you. Um, and uh, it's great. And and by the way, I hope you do more. I mean, but I don't. I don't I mean, want you to do more. Five years on every project. It's it's a lot, but I would love right. to do more. Also, I stream on Twitch. So if you guys want to come over, I stream three times a week. Yes, you're a, you're, bigger, you're a bigger Twitcher than we are. You're a huge one. I mean, I, but I like the fact that you're just hanging out doing a show. This is That's very cool. Kind of, I'm just we've been doing it, yeah. But that you do it, you, like it's we. I think we share a lot of similarities and that stuff. It's like you, you do fun stuff. You get to hang out. You have a great uh, group of people that you. Uh, I feel we're like big, you're, you have a good audience. Big, We've done yeah, we're big fans of people that just make stuff. Like that's uh, our, that's what we, I we love. We just doing. like to go and make stuff. Like I yeah. think that's the whole thing. There, there's nothing worse than the the daggers that are put into your body when you are trying to develop in Hollywood. And that's why I was just like, I'm not doing anymore. I have a graphic yeah. novel coming out. I'm working on a musical. Like I'm, yes, I'm yes, literally yes. anything I can freaking make. And yes, that doesn't pay my bill. None of it does. Are I know. You, well, this is the are thing. You Twitch it, to, are you twitch.tv slash Felicia Day? Felicia Day. Yeah, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, that's it. it. Oh, thanks. Yes. Yeah. I and what are the days, what are the days that you are streaming? I usually stream, um, I just stream during the daytime uh, okay. because my daughter comes home from school at five. So one to four How usually. old is your daughter? She's six years old. Amazing. Mine so, just turned seven. Oh, it's a great, I mean, she's like a civilized so human fun. being now. Yeah, it's I got crazy. a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. Yeah. Oh, God. I know, because I, I remember seeing, I think I was yeah. pregnant the last time I saw you in person, Paul. Because you guys oh my were gosh, yes. on number two. We, yeah. Yes. Wow. We're, yeah. We are, we are close with, uh, yeah. And we, yeah, I remember that. Oh my gosh. It's really funny. Yeah. So I, I stream and we play video games together. Do you guys play games with your kids? I don't. I don't. Only sports I should, games. But I don't. Um, only sports games. And I just introduced them to Mortal Kombat 1. My um, daughter just started a school. I don't know if there's parents watching. Oh yeah. This watching. is, yeah. My daughter started a school with it is like not down with screens. They're like, nope. Oh. Oh uh, nope. yeah, this is a this is and a like, no, this is know, a serious like school. Yeah. So many people go to this school that like their parent like when I drop I my daughter off to school, where, which yeah. school it is? I'll talk to you offline. <laughs> yeah, when I when I drop my daughter off for school, it's like oh, there's an actor, there's an actor there. So when I recognize yeah, them, yeah, like yeah. there, but the kids are not on screen. So you know, we, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Yeah, we my kids, uh, we love they love sports. We play a lot of sports games, uh, FIFA and Madden and NBA oh, 2K. That's cool, but. We, I just got them into, uh, I got them into Mortal Kombat one, which is fun. Uh, and you know, just getting a little bit of just like playing around, but then also, um, I got them into, I want to get this, sorry. I want to get them into, it takes two, you know, oh, that game? it's a great game. I finished that. I played that with my, what a, a really good friend of mine and we we're screaming at each other. It is okay. not easy. Okay. I'll tell the, you that. The, all right. All right. That, that I was want always to do that with June, but I was like, I don't know if I could get her to commit. So maybe, maybe I'll wait a little bit longer, but I like, I like the idea that we sit down and play games with each other. It's, it is fun. Yeah. It's really fun. Well, I really appreciate you having me on. You guys are awesome. And you're I, great. I'm in here, Felicia. Yeah. Great to see you. And we have, we'll pop up all your info again. We'll be Thank watching you. you on Twitch. We'll be listening to the audible book uh, and can't wait. Well, hopefully less than four years to see the next project, but I there know. seems like a lot in the pipeline. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get my ass in gear. All right. <laughs> it's knows? so good. Um, yeah. And by the way, you know, a lot of people ask me, I'll say this uh, too. You don't even know this, but 
people ask me early on, like, uh, or people ask me all the time, like, well, how do I get my setup? What is my setup? You are the one who really inspired me when I first saw your setup. Uh, when we first started doing things like during the I gotta pandemic, I was like, I gotta, oh, I gotta, I gotta get your setup was so that. great. I you had a great, you have a great, and you still have a great setup, but it's like, it's the same setup. It's the same. I mean, you it looks great. I mean, everybody, it becomes the talk of the Zoom every time you get in, oh, right? And uh, we're always 100%. like, what's it's going the only, on with your background? Yeah. And I'm like, it's been Fantastic. four years of this. That's what's, yeah. <laughs> if exactly. you haven't fixed it by I now. Know. I'm so mad at myself. You got to get on it, man. I know. You got to get some depth of field. I hate I know. seeing I need details depth behind field. you. <laughs> That's what I need is some depth of field. Jesus. Rob got I'm that a... for depth of field. He went to Home Depot and got a screen. I'm going to... Was... A... Okay, that's fine. He's in a junker. He's like, he's doing it. Rob's doing a wrestling promo. He's like, you get when you come to the Civic hey. Center. <laughs> oh, no. You want to fight somebody? Fight me. <laughs> oh my God. So All yeah, right. Thank you, Felicia. you, Felicia. Okay, bye. 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 Uh, I listened to a little bit of it uh, before she came on today, her book, uh, Third Eye, and it's it's really great. It just sounds great, too. It's, uh, That's these, awesome. They're really fun. They're really fun. Uh, you should write a couple of those. I guess Rob. I get, I, you know, sometimes I get pissed when people don't put me in their stuff. Like, that's all it is, you know? It's like oh, when we man. interview people. You want her to put you in stuff right away like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's no reason not to. It's always, to me, I'm always like, great to meet you. Great to hear about this. Was my number busy? Like, why wasn't I in it? You know, like that. And that's, <laughs> honestly, Paul, that's what everyone's thinking. Everyone I mean, yeah, everyone's this, always why thinking wasn't that. Why wasn't Hubel in this? Why it wasn't in it? Hey, yeah. Now, let me ask you this, Rob. I know yeah. you got to go. Uh, but the the question is this. Um, favorite Frasier episode? Um, my favorite Frasier episode is, I mean, I, I always feel a little bit uncomfortable talking about this around you because knowing the history of, june kelsey grammar and all of that yeah you know like i just never um i you know you and i have been friends for so long that when i hear about someone you know even looking at june mm, even thank you. looking at them thank I you i don't like i don't like it and um and i want it to stop and you know we've talked offline about all this and i'll just say this directly to kelsey grammar because I know Kelsey watches Twitch and he watches this stream. Kelsey, I want the letters. I want the cards. I want the candy and the flowers wow. to stop. Wow. It has to stop. June is legally married to my dear friend, Paul. And, if the, and I'll tell you this, Kelsey, if it doesn't stop, you're not Thank the you, boss. Rob. You're Thank not you, the boss. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, sorry. Wow. Thank you. No, I really upset. appreciate that. I get it. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Like even you know what it reminds me of? Just very what? quickly, and then I am gonna go. It reminds me of my days as a flight attendant. And oh um, yes. How did you learn how to do that? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I've been very honest with people. Oh, hold on. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, I got yeah. a little cobweb. Oh, right. You got a cobweb up there? Yeah. Oh, there you got it. <laughs> you knocked it down. Um, you know, I, I've talked with you about this offline and, and I've maybe mentioned it to one or two people. But before I got into the entertainment biz, I was in the um, flight attendant game. And... Um, and when I hear about the Kelsey Grammer and the reboot of Frasier and him trying to lure your wife away from your marriage, um, it makes me so mad because it reminds me of different people that I worked with when I was flying uh, and working as a flight attendant. And you so, did that for how many years? For 16 years. Wow. I was a flight attendant for 16 years before I got into uh, comedy. So I wanted to just show you, um, and you know, sometimes when you're flying and you're working, you, f you know, we would take yeah, out our cameras course. and you, something would be happening. And I would say, well, I got to film this. I got to film this right now. So I'll, I'll show you uh, a bully, another flight attendant that I worked with who was a bully. And I couldn't believe it, the way she was treating people. And uh, so I filmed it and I put it out there and, you know, we'll take a look at it. And you can tell me what you think. All right. Doing. Uh, you know, if you need something, just ask me for it. And I'll be happy to get it for you. I just don't like people coming in here and rummaging 
through the gap oh, yeah. in the opening compartment. Could you okay. relax a little bit? What are relax. you so uptight about? I'm not you uptight. You've been ordering me around ever since I've gotten on this airplane. Uh, I haven't been ordering you around. It's just that you come into this galley and you rummage through the compartments and then I can't find anything. It's hard for me to keep organized. Look, I'm trying to do you a favor. I need to get the purser a tray of hors d'oeuvres and... Fine. All you have to do is ask. Linda, this is not just your galley. This galley belongs to all of us. I didn't say it was just my galley, but it is my position. It's my responsibility to keep this service organized. Linda, I've been flying for 14 years, and I do not need you to start telling me what to do and what not to do. For somebody that's been flying for 14 years, you act like you've been flying for two weeks. Shouldn't you be out there doing wines or breads or something in the cabin? Linda, you may think that you do a good job in this galley, but if you were a little bit more organized, maybe we would see your face out in that cabin. I beg your pardon. I can run rings around you or anybody else in the cabin or the galley any time. You know, I've had just about enough of you. I am really sick of you ordering me around. You know, I'm sick of you and prima donnas like you that work this gallant position and you think that What's you have a monopoly on it. I don't have a monopoly on this position. Don't I never I said I had a Wait a minute. of her. Wait a minute. Let's try to keep our voices down. I don't know what the problem is, but let's talk about it later after the service is over. Right now, we should be working together as a team. There are passengers out here waiting for service they deserve and they're not getting it. Sherry, there are several people who need so wow, yeah, Rob. so that's that's Linda. You worked with those people. I, I worked for a long time with wow. Linda and with Sherry and with Tammy, who came in. Tammy is an angel. Okay, <sighs> Tammy would oftentimes come in and talk everyone down and talk some sense into people. But let me tell you something about Linda. Okay, Listen, she's a bully. A bully she is a bully. A uh, bully, an absolute and bully. I won't stand for it. I won't. So anyway, that's. I, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that, Rob. I, I really, it's just truly, hard. am it's sorry. Hard, it's hard to um, think about what I did in the past for a job and the sacrifices I made to get ahead with my body and giving my body away for free and sleeping in. Wait, wait. Strange That's hotel rooms to with travelers. Uh, oh, Paul, the life of a flight attendant is, I mean, to make passengers happy is very difficult and demanding. And when you have a BITCH like Linda, hey, on, I'm sorry, Paul, but I will spell Do not it talk out. about trees like that. A birch? A birch tree like Linda <laughs> on a flight Barking out orders when Sherry and I could easily give out the bread and the wine. Easily. Anyway. Well, they're hors d'oeuvres. I mean, it's for the porter. Anyway, I I, I will the, say that the, that the was passengers like, deserve, The passengers deserve the bread and wine. I'm and, just going to say that, honestly, I want to... I, I do want to just support um, and, 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 and just give a shout out to the director of that. Because uh, that was a person really using improv, letting these actors uh, really uh, go to town. <laughs> and coverage of the scene. Great work. Really good. Camera. By the way, really... I, how big is that airplane that they're able to come in? <laughs> they were uh, rocking that, in from all was, different directions. <laughs> that was a while ago when we the planes were bigger. We didn't know the planes <laughs> were so heavy. And you know now we make oh. them a lot lighter. But this is back in the day. Oh, um, well, Rob, okay. um, great show we did great show it. i'm we, gonna be on tour next week uh i will not be here but on the 25th I, I might i might do a ghost show i love it close to halloween yeah and the we did a, a, a ghost story show a couple weeks ago and i got so many people lined up that i i think i might do a ghost show next week i love that and then the week after that uh on the wednesday the 25th uh, we're going to be live streaming this big event here, the uh, Give Backular Spectacular. Uh, oh, and that is uh, all these amazing yes. people. We're going to be on the front page of Twitch. It's live Holy from the cow. Orpheum. Uh, Penn and Teller, Drew Carey, Halle Berry, Dax Shepard. Jack Black. Uh, Jack Black. Yeah, Jeremy Allen White. Uh, all these amazing uh, people uh, are going to yes. be uh, there. That's gonna uh, be yeah, it's going to be a, a fun and big I, show. And you and I, true or false, you and I are performing live together in a comedy theater this Friday. True or false? True, absolutely true. Yeah. Dynasty typewriter. Me, you, Rob Wait, Riggle. What? Where? Oh, Largo. <laughs> My gosh, how did I mess that up? Uh, me, yes, we're at Largo tomorrow Largo, night. Largo, Largo, 
Largo, Largo. Tomorrow night, Dinosaur at Largo. We do our monthly show. I'm excited about that. Rob Riggle's going to be playing. Uh, it's a new late edition. I got a bone. I got a bone to pick to Riggle uh, with Riggle. You know, I don't want to bring our private text messages into this, but you know, me and you have been texting Riggle about the whole Kelsey. Riggle and Kelsey are buddies, and I've been texting him trying to find out if if Kelsey has been having premarital sex, because I'm really against it. Well, you helped Molly and, out uh, so much with not having that premarital thank sex. Thank you. Thank you. It's just important that people <laughs> resist the urge to have premarital sex. So Travis Kelsey, if you're listening, and I know you are, even though you're playing a game right now, I hope you're not having premarital He's definitely sex. Listening. They're up. They're up by so much. It's probably yeah. relaxing. So anyway, but you and me and Riggle tomorrow night, Friday the 13th. Sashir Zamata, Lisa Gilroy, Mary Holland. It's a great cast yeah, tomorrow yeah, night yeah. Uh, at Largo. I think there are a couple tickets still available. So you can go check that out. So basically, we got a lot. We got a lot on the on the lot on the plate. Uh, and by the way, I'll be on tour next week. I'll be in New York. I'll be in New Haven. I'll be in Rhode Island. I'll be in Maine. And uh, yeah, probably, well, I think I named them all. Uh, yeah. So check it out at How Did This Get Made? A lot, a lot of places. A lot, we're going to be in a lot of different spots. All right, uh, all right Rob. A pleasure. All right, Paul. Great Talk job. to you later. Thanks, See you tomorrow. Thanks for, thanks for being such a nice guy. Wow. Thank you for defending me against Frazier. Okay. <laughs>